So we're getting ready to cover our floors here with a gypsum underlayment. We'll do that just as soon as we can get all of our radiant floor heating tubes installed. Now it's the same crew that handled the tubing in the lower level. Now they're back to take care of the first and the second floors. You've probably seen one of these systems installed before, but the idea is to lay out the tubing in loops that are fed hot water from a central location. The loops can be grouped into zones and controlled individually to increase the warmth as needed. Well, Jason's looking pretty good so far. Nice tight loops and a grid pattern, right? Yep, so far so good. Yep, just trying to follow the CAD drawing as it was drawn out for us. Okay. So now you have multiple loops in this layout. So is there a length of loop that you cannot go beyond? Yeah, we try to keep everything less than 300 with half inch pecs. Okay. Because otherwise you get too long, the flow starts slowing down, and you don't get the heat transfer that you actually need out of the tubing. Okay. And it looks like the pecs is, is pretty easy to work with. You're going pretty quickly. Yes, actually it is pretty easy to work with. It's warm enough out, so it's really flexible for us. Colder it is, the less easy it is to work with, right. but you can still work with it with patience. And you're not using any connectors here? No, we don't want to try to have any splices anywhere in the floor. Unless something actually hurts the tubing, but typically we try not to, or we avoid having any splices in the tubing anywhere. What happens if somebody actually does pierce the tubing? Then you actually have to give us a call and we actually have to come back and splice the tubing and protect the splice joint so nothing hurts the splice joint. Something we try to avoid at all costs. So as far as pouring our gypcrete, what do you want to get done before we start doing that? Basically, we got to get all the tubing laid down, okay. everything hooked up to the manifold, and air in the system. That way if something hurts the tubing, you'll have bubbles coming up where you got a hole. So two floors, what do you think, two, three, four days? Well, three, four days to finish this up. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. No. Now Jeff Wiedemann is here helping us with our radiant floor heat with the tubing, the hardware, and the planning. How are you doing? Very good. And how are you? Good. By now, most people are pretty familiar with PEX tubing, right? But what I want to talk about is more of the hardware. So say, for example, the manifold. You want to tell us how that works? OK, this is a manifold that we use. Basically, it's a distribution center that what you can do is use to connect all the tubing that you have running through the different loops or even different rooms. Okay. You'll basically have your hot water come in here. There's temperature gauge to see the temperature. It'll flow out through the room, come back up to the return, and then go back to be able to be reheated and start the process all over again. Now you can also have different temperatures in different rooms, and this helps facilitate that, right? That is correct. Basically we will take the loops. Maybe you have a bigger room that uses three loops. We'll put actuators on the top, and then the thermostat will tie into each actuator or this group of three, so when it needs heat, these will open just along the flow to go through those loops. So as far as layout goes, you want to have a higher concentration of loops by doors and windows, and then also less in places like closets, of course, wine cellars, stuff like that, right? Exactly. Rooms like this, where you have a lot of concentration of glass area, I would tighten up the on-center spacing a little bit, and then make it a little bit bigger as you move back into the room, because of the higher heat losses at those windows. Right. And then under cabinets, what about the kitchen? How would you deal with it? Kitchen, cabinets, things like that, I would probably stay away from. Uh, one, if they're interior parts of the building, there really isn't any heat loss. And then anything that goes over the top of the floor, you really don't get the heat out of it other than warm canned goods. And warm corn's not what you want. Not at all. No, no. Well, no, this can also be done in not only new construction, but also retrofitted for existing homes. Absolutely. We have some nice retrofit products that you can use. It's a plywood product that raises the floor height about a half an inch. We have other products that can go below the joist if it's easier to be, uh, get access to ceilings from below and to put it underneath the floor. And of course, we have to mention, everyone likes to save money. You can actually save a lot of money using radiant heat, right? You can. What we find is people are more comfortable at lower temperatures than conventional air systems. And so even that change of degrees between those two settings means energy efficiency and savings for the homeowner. Well, good. Now, as soon as Jason finishes laying his tubes, we're going to be ready for gypcrete, right? Yep. Now, as soon as the guys get the tubing laid and inspected, we'll be covering it with a gypsum underlayment to create a rock-solid thermal mass.